Uh, if you could tell the world one thing, what would it be? I'd say slow down. And, you know, um, and not like, not in a negative way, but I just think like the world is just progressively, in my own personal opinion, is going too fast. Like everything's like, you know, like it feels like patience is diminishing in a general sense. Like everything's immediate and quick. And I, and like that being said, like I say about the eighties, like when I was a kid, I remember it, it was still probably pretty busy compared to like my parents growing up, but it was just a little more chill. You know, people had the time to, you know, think about other people and, and consider other people's feelings or their, you know, them as a person. And just, you know, you had to wait, you had to be patient for things. And now I feel like just the progression of technology and the way things are going, um, things are a bit too fast, I guess. Like, the, yeah, the patience is kind of going to a, going downhill a bit so not not everybody you know but like just as a general like just hey, we're kind of tuned now to kind of expect things so fast that it's i kind of miss the way things were before when you had to kind of wait it out and appreciate things a bit more so that's what i'd say i hope that was a good answer <laughs> that's great it also shows you're such a film guy you gotta <laughs> yeah it's perfect I all my own film so i like that's another thing too that's why i like shooting film you have to chill out of and, and, you know, take the whole process and it's not immediate. And, you know, there's a lot of downfalls. You think you got a good shot and you develop all the film and you're frustrated, but you know, it teaches you patience and you learn a lot too at the same time. So that, that does have a good translation to kind of what I said for sure. Yeah. I feel like we, we should develop an app. That's like, I can't think of a good word, but like the opposite of Instagram where like, when you take a picture even with your phone, you got to wait like a week for it to fucking develop. Yeah. It would never fly. Nobody would that's give a genius, shit. genius though, actually, too, <laughs> because like, you know, you forget about it. And, you, and that's why I like film too, even though if I take the London drugs, it's exciting, right? You get to see the prints and, and yeah, you get, you just get a better look at it. You know, you just have to sit back and, you know, wait, wait it out. You know, you're not just constantly like, oh, that's not good enough. And you kind of build up like too many expectations with the quick digital age that you, you know, you can shoot so much and you get it so fast that you sometimes like are not, not always in the moment. So I think it's definitely good. Yeah. Hey man, you have a genius idea. That might be good. <laughs> could yeah, teach we'll, us all some things, right? Yeah. We'll talk about it. We'll see. Maybe that'll be the uh, post exposure studio uh, side project. We'll, yeah, uh, no, for sure. You're we'll, on to something you know. big. I think, <laughs> I, think I'd be, I, I would get it, man. I would get it for sure. I, I'd get that app. My Viewfinder is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. This episode of My Viewfinder is brought to you by The Shared Mic. Can you remember the last time you spoke to someone from a totally different generation who wasn't a member of your family? There's so much we can learn from listening to people both younger and older than ourselves. The Shared Mic Conversation for the Ages is a unique interview format intergenerational podcast by age-friendly Edmonton, bringing together Edmontonians of different ages and backgrounds to discuss topics that matter to them. Season 2 launches October 5th and features conversations about cultivating friendships, building careers, exploring virtual theater, volunteerism, and much more. Find The Shared Mic on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Shared Mic is brought to you by the Edmonton Seniors Coordinating Council and the City of Edmonton. Okay, we've met Tyler in the first part of our chat, getting his perspective on connections between skateboarding, photography, and just living in general. It's refreshing to meet someone so positive. I spend a lot of time in a critical mind space, and unsurprisingly, I spend a lot of time in my mind. Speaking to Tyler, I realize that the main thing is to just get out there, fall on my face a few times, and earn that new trick. Let's hear more. I feel like I need more positivity in my life today. That's fascinating. It sounds, I mean, maybe it's because you love it so much. It sounds so idealistic. There's like a... You know, this, I mean, it's not even that underground anymore. You know, we, again, to just reference the 90s, um, I mean, of course, Tony Hawk's game kind of changes uh, the presence of skateboarding, particularly, you know, not just the video game world, but in the cultural diaspora, whatever you want to call it. But then you get, you know, X Games and all these professional televised um, 
um, structured events. So it moves out of this underground uh, downtown kids with some, you know, some grease, whatever you guys were putting on those corners, uh, just mucking the shit up and then grinding, uh, grinding concrete to these uh, elaborate. I mean, it's why kids today think that skate parks are almost entitlement because uh, if it wasn't for that TV presence and putting these incredible, incredible arenas up in the middle of a park, um, you know, we wouldn't have modern skate parks. They're all modeled after, after these uh, insane things that were coming out. Um, but now that I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm starting to think like I, I could, I mean, I'm not in that world, but I couldn't name, you know, a, a cynical, corruptible celebrity uh, or somebody that comes out of that. Uh, I'm sure there were pricks too, but that tried to absorb it or take it over. I mean, even some of these companies, and this may just be, you know, the the nuanced idea, but yeah, it's it's hard for me to kind of picture. Normally I have a, a quick quip about trying to bring this back into uh, sort of the destruction of modern culture. But um, the way you're describing it, it sounds like there's uh, something about, uh, at least in this case, skateboarding, that it's uh, about the process uh, and it's about uh, the community. Um, I watched that documentary. What's that? Uh, the the crazy guy, Rodney Mullins, or is it? Uh, oh, yeah, and you know, like the guy who did the freestyle, like he. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's like, right. Like when he's younger, he, he had this like these like groundbreaking flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hmm? That's right. Yeah. That dude yeah. who was the kind of a peer of Tony Hawk, but he didn't have the marketability, and and he's kind of, I mean, like pure spectrum guy. Like he's not a sociable person, but he's like this uh, savant, like on a freestyle skateboarding. Um, but watching stuff like that, one of the things that stood out to me is, I mean, he's still in the community. He's not on a billboard, but like everybody respects him, whether he wants the attention or not. Um, and I mean, you brought up sort of the illusion and the connection to like social media influencers. For me, social media influence, and this might be why I'm so cynical about photography itself as a process, is the opposite end of that, where in my mind, it's pure egoism. Uh, it's about making the brand about myself so I can get my paycheck. Uh, there's going to be a core in that in professional anything. I mean, these sponsorships had, at least in the heyday, become very lucrative. There's a lot of these guys who are making, you know, legitimate money. It's not like you were just working for free boards anymore. I mean, there was big marketing dollars that got into it. But um, I don't know. I mean, do you think, I mean, the inverse, all of that to kind of come to this thing, and I'm I'm suspecting this might not be a great question, but the inverse relationship of what we're talking about, relationship, uh, of whether photography and video have influenced the culture uh, of skateboarding itself. And um, I mean, it sounds like, of course there is, but it doesn't sound like a negative thing. It sounds like you guys are trying to display things to share with each other, um, which is interesting. Like, do you think as a skateboarder, photography could set up any negative impact, you know, as an individual skateboarder or towards the culture of skateboarding? Or has it always been, you know, this you know, almost childlike thing where you open it up and you see somebody doing, you know, whatever, they're 80 feet in the air or they're doing something with their feet that shouldn't make any physical... This is how I feel about watching dancing. Like my, like you were talking about, like I love dancing, dancing moves, et cetera. But now when I watch competitions, b-boys stuff, I can't even comprehend the physics <laughs> of what some of these young guys do and, and women um so i mean yeah is it is it different in that in the skateboarding world like do you guys not feel this pressure where you're not good enough like if you see a photograph it's not uh, corrupting it's more like aspirational or i mean what's your sense about photography's presence uh, itself in in the culture um i think it is important um because it is motivational like you'll see I remember that was kind of how we had to learn stuff back in the day before Instagram. Like we had very limited resources. Like we had to get, you know, like um, that's always like a lot of, a lot of the videos I, I watch. like they have a lot of good interviews with like older pro skateboarders that are my age and just kind of their perspective on things. And uh, a lot of it is kind of a divide. Like us older guys, we were in a whole different generation. Like we had to wait years for a VHS tape and then we could learn tricks. We'd be like, Whoa, I've never seen that before. But now kids like kind of learn from a feed. Like, um, like they'll get photos immediately or, um, you know, it's infinite. Like the possibilities are infinite on Instagram. Like you can see uh, thousands of tricks a day. So it is, it's, 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 um, I think it's good for kids these days because they have like, even through photos or video, they have quicker access. So they, like, we had to wait, we had to like a leg and we had to, so that alone really delayed just because it was analog and print and things processes took too long. 
that it really delayed our learning time where we had to hope that someone in Calgary was amazing. We could see it firsthand. Like a lot of our local sponsor guys, that's how we had to learn. We had to, whatever crazy trick they learned, that was the only way we could see it until a video came out or something like that. Whereas now I think it is good for kids to see because it is motivational. Like it'll push them. Like they'll see some guy, you know, do like a crazy flip trick, like um, something now kids are so good. They can do any flat ground flip trick down like a 15 set or something like a massive set of stairs that I would, you know, would be scared to Ollie down. So now kids see that even though it's in California or New York or whatever, they can translate that to Calgary. Be like, Oh, I know a set of stairs by my house. That's that big. And I got that trick down. Maybe I'll try it, you know, like, and it could be a photo or a video, like a photo is just, I feel it's just as inspirational. Like I would look through magazines as a kid, even though it isn't video, I would still see the trick. And you've seen it in the trick done in another skate video, like on VHS. And so you would know the mechanics of the trick, but you'd see a photo and you'd be like, oh, well, he's doing it down that. Or I never think to grind a ledge like that. Or I could, there's a ledge, like we could whack some ledges that are like that. Cause I never really thought about this spot being a good place to skate. But this guy, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of comparables between, the, between, you know, even if it's in California or Barcelona or New York or anywhere in the world, like any photo can really spark a lot of inspiration in a kid that's trying to learn a trick or has a trick that never really thought about doing it a certain way or down something. So I think it's great nowadays. Kids have, like I was saying, like infinite access to anything. Whereas we had, to, we had to wait for our monthly magazine subscription or, uh, or video to come out whenever it came out and like uh, with the old VHS days. So that, I think it is good for kids. Like that's probably like I can't, I, it's unfair to say that's why kids are so good, but like it probably does have something to do with it. There's a lot more motivation, inspiration coming daily on Instagram. And that's the thing too. It's not like skateboarding does have, you know, like it's very divided. Like skateboarding does have the bigger, like it's, it, there's a big divide between like the mainstream and still underground. Like there's still a lot of underground guys. And I kind of more favor that side of things in skateboarding, like not the big, big, like, bright light skateboarding so much because i grew up in an era where it was diy it was underground there was not really much else other than you're right like tony hawk and that like i remember i was skating for like probably like two or three years before x games got big and then x games led to street league i don't know if you ever heard of street league they'll like get out a whole arena like they'll like kind of lease out an arena and build a cement park with like x games ramps and like they they take the time to build like complete cement ramps so it's and yeah, so it's a bit of a trade off. Like some people are even like, you know, like it is unreal. The guys are unreal, but a lot of people have it like taken to heart, like skateboarding, starting in the streets, and that's where it needs to be seen. And then that's another thing too. Like a lot of the things too, you there's like an unwritten rule. Like you skate park photos. It's kind of ironic because I take a lot of skate park photos. Or like magazines will take a street photo way before a, uh, a skate park photo because street is re- like Thrasher especially because. Thrasher was like, you know, really punk in San Francisco and, and grew up in that era where it was like raw street skating. So it was critical. Any of their photographers had, you know, had to have street content or not, no, but not for Bert though. Like Bert, you have to be the skate park or, you know, backyard pool, but they would take a backyard pool photo over a Bert ramp photo any day. So there's that little, kind of fine line with the old school mentality. And even a lot of young kids still have that old school mentality, like take it to the streets. Um, so there's a bit of a divide between like park, big contract, big lights kind of thing. And just like the raw DIY take, like filming. Cause like some of the guys, like um, some of the big guys on Nike that are, you know, like positioned to be on like team USA or in the Olympics coming up, like the Olympics really obviously boosted that big mainstream appeal for skateboarding too. Like it's really hyped a lot of people and, and the guys I personally love watching skating won't, probably be on the olympic team but i you know i'm okay with that because i i like the way they skate anyways so there's a divide like it's i still respect every skateboarder and i and i love seeing what they do but it's just a matter of taste you know you're like kind of one way or another like really mainstream big or you kind of like the diy feel and and the same with photography like this the the photo photographers i like nowadays are the guys that there's a guy for this crew called Bronze 56K that um, Mike K. Killa, he's like a young guy in New York and all stuff's just fall around the crew around New York. So you get really raw kind of New York photos and you get a feel of the city. You go, I like the whole team. So every photo he gets is a guy I'm a big fan of. So I feel like that's a, yeah, it's kind of a divide. You, you follow who you like and still, I still respect the guys. I don't, you know, I'm not watching their content heavy, but you know, they skateboard and I appreciate that. I think that's key. Like, 
everyone's taking the time to do it. And I think they, no matter what, what way you skate or who's filming you or what platform you're on, I think it's, you know, we're all doing what we love and I definitely have a lot of respect for everybody, but you know, there's that divide where I kind of come from that old school mentality where I like to see a lot of, a lot of street, street kind of skating and stuff like that. So yeah, that's a lot of thing. A lot of video parts you can't film in parks. It's got to be street parts. Like if you're a street skater, you got to get all street clips unless there's a video that's doing like a demo because you can't avoid that. You're at a skate park. So that's kind of like there's sort of an unwritten rule of like what you can and can't film and what the real, real deal stuff is. Like the real deal stuff is like going out in the streets of the crew, getting street footage and kind of keeping it where it first started. So that's sort of kind of the, the way it is. But, but I still love a lot of photographers that shoot parks. Like, some of the best guys shooting, shooting photos still, you know, will be dedicated to parks or like street league stuff. And they still take unreal photos, but it's all a matter of taste and, and, you know, any skate photo I love, but I just love some more. <laughs> I, uh, I'm hearing a lot of some of the, I mean, we could call it underground conversations about street photography, you know, uh, in, in what you just described, there's, uh, uh, often, particularly at the ground level, a little bit of disdain for commercial photography, even though there's a, a great deal of respect. So even, you know, a sponsored professional photographer that does street work uh, obviously has a completely different um, tone, feel, and intentionality. Um, and so there, there's that tension where, um, you know, one, if you're uh, positive, you could say, I, I might aspire to be the next, whatever, like Fuji sponsored, uh, uh, street photographer. I don't know if it'll happen in Calgary per se, but let's say you're living in a major, you know, U S or European metropolis and you're taking these, you know, incredible uh, pictures. Um, or, uh, the negative side is, you know, the idea that that's selling out. And what I want is this, uh, like to go the full extreme like this grit uh, etc i mean there you could even argue that perhaps the analog digital debate might uh, fall into this camp too where you know some people would say uh, the only correct you know sense of photography has to be something on an emulsion and uh, digital is completely untrustworthy um, but hidden in that i wonder um, is this problem i guess of privilege uh, you know like being an underground skater or being a personal photographer requires you to not be able to like to have to be okay, not relying on that to be income uh, and to be able to have sustenance outside of that. And it becomes a hobby um, or you go the full other way and you got, like you talked about at the beginning, you got to push grind and set yourself up as somebody that can be commercially available to get money uh, to do something, even if perhaps, you know, that's not originally what you set out to do. Uh, and it's interesting to me. I mean, one of the things I want to fall back on in the end is to go back to this idea of how you see photographs and how that might have been influenced by being an urban sk uh, street skater. But, um, I mean, do you do you have a sense of, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, whether we want to talk about skaters per se, uh, specifically or skate photographers specifically, um, you know, is there something about, uh, I don't know, a puritanical or all right like uh bipartisan i mean we'll do the u.s thing bipartisan uh rhetoric <laughs> uh about this stuff um you know uh, do do people argue a lot about what's real skateboarding and uh and, and that shit's fake or you know i'll only you know, i'll die on this hill that uh you know this is the way i want to to be like uh and is you know is there in your mind something more pure uh something more valuable <laughs> that might even influence what you take pictures of and when you take pictures and you know things of that nature yeah no for sure like um my my dream like if i could take photos that choice of i would always choose to go like meet someone downtown calgary rather than um because most of the shoot, photos i shoot are at millennium which is uh and that's even debatable if it's even a park anymore because this is like more of a street spot than a park. So there's this like ongoing joke that Millennium is now a street spot because it's so old and it's kind of decrepit. It looks like just like a brutalist structure in the middle of downtown. Um, so, but personally, I would like choose over anything, even over money. I'd rather get something that I loved. Like um, that's the thing with skateboarding is a big divide is like, more than ever like guys have either a lot of money in skating or or none and same with even the the filmers and photographers you've got to take a side 
it's kind of crazy how that works. If you take a side and like you're, you're like you're saying you live or die by your decision. And a lot of people are still okay with not taking the money. Um, cause yeah, right now I, it's like one day I hope to maybe get some money or get something published. And that's like a dream of mine, but I don't know if it might happen. It might not, but I'd rather, if I had the photo, I'd rather have something probably analog to be honest, analog, like a great analog shot downtown Calgary, you know, showing, you know, like some highlights of Calgary with the shot, like one of those photos, like I like a maybe long lens, like it's like definitely emphasizing Calgary, but a great skate photo at the same time. So I'm kind of on that. Yeah. Like on that old school mentality, like I'd rather do it for the love than the money personally. Um, but I'm, I'm from that old, old like range of skateboarders like from the nineties. So that's like what I came up with. That's what I admired. Like, but that being said, a lot of the photographers I really look up to get commercial work. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of Atiba Jefferson. He's really big. He was, um, he was huge in California. Like he shot all my favorite skateboarders that lived in California. And I was just like, thought this guy is the greatest. Like Atiba shot photos so well, skateboarders. But then all of a sudden he had like all these crazy photos of the Lakers. Like he was getting really picked up because which is interesting. Like he kind of st stuck true to skating and that kind of got him out there. They're like, Oh, we like his sort of like raw kind of skate skate look. And he wasn't going overboard, but we, you know, he just has that look that is true to the streets and true to the feel of skateboarding. And through that, I think he made connections. Like he knew a lot of guys that kind of had connections through Nike and stuff like that. And I, I love all his photos. He's shot Riza too from Wu-Tang. He shot like Kobe he shot like all the Lakers since probably late nineties. Like he's got unreal portraits for, for basketball magazines. So like, it's nice to see that he's a guy too, that can do massive commercial work. But like, I still go back and I love his, I love his skate photos to this day. I still love it. Like, and um, so he's like, he's a huge inspiration because he, he does everything great. The guy can't miss ever, you know, and he's a really good guy too. And, um, and even that too, Ilford did, um, so I don't want to ramble on, but Ilford did, a skateboarding legends like thing on YouTube and all the guys they, they showed were great dudes like Ray Barbie. He was like a pioneer in street skating. Nicest guy ever. Like I've never seen the guy mad in any video clips or anything. Just a really kind hearted man, a good family man. And he's a great photographer. Um, he's a great skateboarder. He changed the game and Elford did a whole piece on him. Like his process with skateboarding and photography and same with Jason Lee. A lot of people might know him from acting, but he was a legendary pro skateboarder way back in the day. And he still kills it. Jason Lee still can skate amazing. And, you know, time doesn't slow him down. And then um, who else is it? Joe Brooks too. Uh, Joe Brooks is in, um, he's like an SF photographer. He, he's like crazy. He's been around since day one in SF. He's really documented everything in San Francisco, the skate scene he works for Thrasher. Um, it's just amazing. He just captures the city and skating and his pureness. And Ilford was, I was pretty amazed that Ilford did a whole series on those guys. And they a lot of the things were too, like how photography parallels with, with skateboarding. And it was like, you know, easy transition. They were saying like it disconnects so fluidly, you know, a lot of things you look for in photography are there, there in skateboarding. And I think it is also easy to shoot skating when you skate. But like I definitely, I have friends that don't shoot, like that don't skateboard, but I invite them out to skate events to like try to get better at skating or shooting skating, sorry. And, uh, but yeah, it is a little easier when you skate, like, cause you kind of know when they're going to pop a trick, when you hit the shutter, like when they're in, when the best look of the trick is. And so, yeah, I see it's a tough one, but I, I kind of like the, kind of like the old analog process. Like whenever I'm at an event, I like to shoot at like black and white film rather than digital, but I'll have both my cameras just in case, you know, just to give it some range. Yeah. So uh, just staying on that point, I mean, I guess the two thoughts, uh, you know, there's a different approach with analog, like you just brought up, uh, quite an intentionality in your case, an insight as a skateboarder to hit a shutter, to not waste the frame. Um, but also you brought up earlier about seeing, you know, objects and situations in a different way. Um, is there anything, you know, that you could give a specific example? I, I don't know if you do just, let's call it standard street photography, and you're going to talk, like you have an experience with, you know, uh, yeah, objects, stairs itself, or they're always interacting with skateboarding. But, um, you know, what is, uh, what is it that you believe um, skateboarding has given you insight into how you view the world, let's say through a viewfinder or through uh, the process of photography? Um, well, like when we were going downtown, like when I say when there's no, there's no 
skate parks really in the city. Um, you know, you're just even anything can, you're looking for anything to keep busy. Like, you know, you could, a parking lot could be with a curb could be an obstacle. Whereas like the general society would just be like, Oh, there's a painted parking block. Like it's just um, a structure or an object. Right. But to us, it's like an unlimited possibility of tricks or combinations of tricks. So I find that too, you're just, I think just you're trained skateboarding to look for, like, I think till the day I'm, I die, I'll, it doesn't matter how old I get, I'll be like driving somewhere and be like, oh, look at that set of stairs. Like someone could do this down there. That's a perfect ledge off those stairs. Like it doesn't matter how old I get it. It's like ingrained in your thought process to look for really abstract things that people would just kind of take for granted because they don't skateboard, right? They just like, that's for walking, that's for whatever to put hold while you're going on the stairs. But we are constantly almost over the top on the lookout for like, like even last night we were going around downtown and I had my, uh, my video camera, like my VX and which is an iconic skateboard camera. I was going to mention too, that things never died. The VX 1000 by Sony. It's like, like never going to die in skateboarding. It's kind of one of the more iconic things where we're going around downtown with that. And same thing. We were like kids again. We're like, Oh, we, you could do this. Uh, my friend, I filmed doing a line and it was like in a little simple parking lot. Most people would never look at it, but we filmed this, crazy line you did with three tricks in a basic looking parking lot with a yellow curb and a ramp and a set of stairs so i think that just that over kind of the over attention or i don't know hyperactive attention to these really abstract things helps you when you're taking photos like when i even go and i'm i don't I, I i don't think i'm a very great street photographer like i need some practice in it more you know um gotta stop being so shy and maybe get, get a little more ambition ask people to take their photo like uh, but I think it helps me when I go out cause I'm, you know, walking around downtown Calgary and I'm constantly noticing things that maybe wouldn't be noticed. And then you can start framing shots from there. Um, you know, it starts building for maybe a, a great photo, just little random things people might pass by. I might notice there's a skate spot that also, you know, pulls my eye towards something else. It helps. Yeah, exactly. Helps frame a shot you wouldn't really have noticed before. And same with when you take a street photo, a lot of the guys are very creative. Like they don't just are like, Oh, I'm just going to shoot this trick at whatever the easiest angle I want. Like they're constantly looking for interesting angles to integrate the building structure, the, how the stairs look, how the, like with the, they, it's usually good to get them front facing. So if you have to get them front facing on a grind where their backs to the stairs, you got to really find an obscure angle to highlight the trick and the, and and the the individual doing the trick so it's a lot of a lot of problem solving and and I, and I haven't really seen too many bad skate photos like the guys that do it or I've been doing it for years like a lot of the big guys amazing are 20 plus years and they just have that kind of key attention from skateboarding mixed with you know their skill in photography and it blends for sometimes a perfect image if you're a skateboarder it's it's kind of not just skateboarding but it's a bigger thing you know it's a great photo outside of skateboarding but it's also a great skateboard photo kind of a nice nice mix there you know i feel like it'd be a great experiment uh you know once you've developed let's say a portfolio of both skateboarding and non-skateboarding photos to see if it responds more like your entire body of work with skateboarding communities versus non-skateboarding so for example like if it's influenced you so much that taking a picture of a staircase is going to uh, wake up the imagination of a skateboarder and somebody else might look at it and be like, why did you fucking take a picture of this thing? Uh, or if, you know, th there'll be something, uh, I was uh, transient the wrong word, but, uh, you know, something uh, universal about the photograph itself. I mean, I, uh, as much as there are courses and, and people that will say that there is something universal about the aesthetics and beauty, I'm, I'm not sure if I agree with that entirely. Yeah. Uh, because I'm a hater. I hate a lot of stuff. So uh, <laughs> people will tell me I'm supposed to like things and I'll, I'll walk away from it. But um, yeah, it's neat. I, I think uh, it's fascinating to listen to you, Tyler, just because uh, like, you, you're just so positive and, uh, and how much it seems like skateboarding um, and, you know, leverage into photography seems to give you that peace, that sense of sort of uh, maybe even a higher purpose. Uh, that might be too big, but... Uh, yeah, like a connection to something. It's kind of neat. Like I always say, like, even as I've gotten older, I don't skateboard much, even just pushing, like, going, I have, like, a film board with soft wheels, even just cruising around downtown, and it's just, like, any problem you may have in life just kind of melts away. And you get that, like, peaceful feeling of being a kid again. And um, same with skateboard photography. Like, one day, 
shooting skateboard photography is better than a whole year of just shooting photos. Like I, I get more excited for a perfect skate photo that turns out than anything I've ever really shot. Like, you know how you always get, you know, there's always those one offs that, you know, just, or you just blow your mind. But this one day of street skating is just the best thing ever for me. Like it just makes my year really like if I had one day of like an unreal day of shooting, yeah, shooting street photos, like street skating photos, I'd be set for a year. I'd be happy all year. So I just need that one day a year and I'm pretty good. You know? Awesome. That's, I don't know. Now I, now I wish I could be like you. I will. I'll find something. <laughs> you could. You could. And even, you know, that even being said, like anybody, I can't speak for everybody. Like everyone's different. But if anyone's ever, if you guys are ever out shooting street photos and you see some guys skating downtown, most skateboarders are pretty pumped, like to get a photo. Like uh, don't ever, yeah, feel intimidated. And I, you know, I, like I said, obviously I can't speak for everyone. We're, we're all different. But um, most are pretty inviting. You know, they'll be like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, and they're pumped because they want to, you know, they're just skating and they didn't really have any intention of getting anything shot, but you know, they have a great memory or like they'll be pumped that you got, you shot a photo of them. And so if you're ever out that, that said to everybody, if you're ever out sh shooting street photos and you see guys skating, definitely approach them and ask and give it a shot. Right. Cause you never know. You might be, might be a great skate photographer. You don't even know it. Hey. Right? Yeah. It's interesting. I, I remember, I think, shit, I don't know. Maybe it was four years ago. I was in Toronto. I'm from Toronto. So I was in Toronto and I was visiting, uh, I'm going to say it was my sister because she usually lives downtown and has been for a long time, but it might have been one of my other friends. And we ended up uh, at a skate park or in actually it might have just been uh, uh, like a like an arena, but it, like a little uh, hockey setup, but in the middle of summer. Um, yeah, I, I didn't have, like you were talking about, I didn't have the sort of moxie to go up and talk to the folks and just be like, you know, I'll shoot it. This is my, at the time, I don't know, Instagram or website or, or email. And I'll, you know, I'll flip you the photos, but like, it'd be cool. I, I was just sort of, uh, you know, one step behind. Um, but they, they don't give a shit because they're in their own, A, they're in their own little world. And um, yeah, even there was a, a little team of, I think the, the women were roller skating. I can't remember if they were actually, I have to look at the picture. This is a long time ago, but you know, there's always that tension too of like uh, some creepy dude with a with a camera, but like nobody, like you know, they were just happy to that there was this sort of interchange. I always um, sort of credit that to just being, uh, you know, Toronto, and I find that when I'm in a larger city, uh, I don't know if it's because people are pressed up closely. I would expect people to be angrier, but uh, you know, I, I get a lot more tension here in Calgary, frankly, uh, um, when I'm out with my camera lately. Uh, we won't get into that because that's a whole. Uh, especially in the modern uh, social context. There's a lot of things to read into that. Uh, but um, yeah, it's something I'm going to keep that in mind. I think next time I'm out and I see uh, some, some people uh, just ripping it, maybe I'll, maybe I'll stop them. If I, especially if I've got a little off camera flash and we can fuck around with some, uh, some cool stuff. I, I think that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you get in trouble. And there's another parallel you said, like I've had that too. I've had a bit of, um, about if not confrontation, but I've been, you know, when you take street photos, it can happen. People can get upset. Um, there's another parallel with skateboarding, getting yelled at for skateboarding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Par the parallels continue. Hey, but yeah, no, I know what you mean, but, um, most, most skateboarders are, yeah, you, I don't think you should expect any trouble. I'd be pretty, pretty pumped that you care enough to want to take a photo. You know, if you, if you're on the way to their trick, they'd be more than pleased to, I'm sure to get a photo. And like, if you were, sharing it with them they'd be really really pumped i think they'd have no problem with that because i've done that a few times too a couple of guys downtown i didn't really know like i, I had my skate so i might have made it easier but um i always like to just see you know if you can and most guys are pretty cool about it and they, they wouldn't have any problem with it it sounds like what i'll have to do next time is just go down with you except i don't board so i'll probably have to be jogging or something just to keep up but uh or i'll take the our shitty transit and meet you at an intersection but uh yeah, we'll do that, Tyler. Seriously, we'll we'll set up a little, uh, a yeah. little uh, yeah, sojourn, and you can show me some some stuff. It'd be it'd be neat. I, I know a few local street photographers. I think that would be excited to just uh, peek into that world. To, yeah. Yeah. No, that'd be great. Because and even too, like I've been like just guys I've met. I met a couple of people through um, beer and cameras, and they were like, "Oh, I'd like to shoot skating," because they saw that I shot skating on my Instagram feed. And so whenever there's an event like nine times holds like go skate day or they hold a really fun event at Halloween, like they have all these really elaborate kind of 
best trick contest and people have to wear their costume. And so that's like just built for a great photo. And um, so whenever there's something going on, I have like a bit of a group of people that like expressed the, that they wanted to shoot skating. And I always let them know when there's an event and if they can make it, they make it. If they can't, they can't. And, um, and yeah, and even, even they appreciated it at nine times because a lot of their shop riders, like they want to get photos of them and, you know, use it for posts or, Forever. So they're definitely happy to get content because if no one's shooting, it's hard. You know, it's kind of too bad, right? You can't document an event properly. And so the more people shooting, you get way better documentation of, you know, time that passes by, which is, I think, you know, like sometimes we don't take, we take it for granted, right? So like, even like, um, yeah, I'll let you know for sure. Like whenever there's a big event or if I'm going to plan to shoot, shoot skating, I'll definitely let you know because the more the merrier, I think it's better to get you know, a lot of people can learn off each other too. Like they, they, you get so many different photos. It's interesting to see maybe even the same trick shot from a whole bunch of different people and see kind of what happens. Eh? I was just going to say, we, we'll go meta. Like you'll take pictures of me on the board, uh, you know, and uh, we can create a little photo essay of that. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, that's uh, the thing. That's, that's the beauty of shooting skateboarding. It's pretty, skateboarding is pretty chill and DIY and accepting like anyone's, welcome to to do it and to shoot it and that's the beauty of skateboarding is that everyone's welcome and that's why i've always loved it over the years you always feel comfortable and you're doing it and you know nothing holds you back everyone at millenniums are good people and, and it's, it's, a, it's just a good good place to be you know all right bro well thanks so much for hanging out with me man and uh it's cool to meet you know i i got into my little inner city head where i thought you know i knew 20 photographers so i knew everybody in calgary which is a uh, fucking egotistical but what I loved about uh, meeting you and all the people in Explore Studios, I haven't, I had no idea you existed, Tyler. So this is, uh, it's pretty dope. It's like, yeah, uh, I, I hope we can get to a skate park. I hope that uh, I can take some weird pictures. But mostly, uh, you know, uh, thanks for your insight because I think, yeah, the world could use some more skateboarding ethos. And uh, right for the love of the game, shit, it's getting a little out of control, like you said. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you having me. And that was great. I had a great talk with you. And it's, it's good to, yeah, like you said, yeah, it's exactly. It's good to meet more people in Calgary because you get in your own little bubble and, and it is, it's good to get outside of that and meet, meet other people. We got a great photo community in Calgary and I, I think it's just going to keep building, which is nice. Yeah. I think it, I think it was great. And thanks very much for having me, David. I appreciate it. Imagine approaching social media as a tool and not as a poison sucking away at the meaning of life. Instagram as inspirational? As a learning tool? Are we even using the same app? Tyler suggests that skateboarding can show you that objects should not be taken for granted. Just like photography can teach you to appreciate light. Art is interacting with the world through a passion to engage. I'm not gonna learn how to ollie or kickflip by just thinking about it, apparently. So what are you going to do today? I can tell you're inspired. Get out there and wax the curb of your life. Regardless of what that security guard over there says, work through those falls, rashes, and broken bones and feel the exhilaration of earning that next trick. Or if skateboarding's just not your thing, subscribe, rate this podcast, and tell your friends to tune in each week. Thanks as always and look forward to our next guest. My name is David Yun, and we'll see you next week here on My Viewfinder. How about, uh, what's your favorite sound? My favorite sound, probably they all involve water. It's a tough one when I sing with that. It's probably either like rain or like, oh, like either like waves crashing or, o or like ocean sounds. It's like I used to, uh, when I lived on Vancouver Island, if I got stressed at work or something, I needed to clear my mind. There's like a nice little beach called Saratoga Beach, kind of a little bit south of the town I lived in. And it was just perfect. You could see the mainland from there and always like really smooth, kind of calming, Sounds was like kind of my Sunday spot before work started up and I always go back and I guess probably if I can think about it, my my favorite sound, I'd say. Today, I want to tell you about ATB's new podcast, The Future Of. Join Todd Hirsch, ATB's Vice President and Chief Economist, as he connects with special guests who offer unique and useful perspectives about the future. Explore how our economy and communities not only brace for change, but embrace the opportunity it creates. From the future of women in business to the changing nature of work itself, the future of helps understand what's coming and what we need to do today to get to the tomorrow we want. Featuring two episodes each month, plus bonus episodes, the future of 
includes interviews with top community and business leaders from Alberta and around the world. Subscribe to The Future Of in the Apple Store, Google Play, Spotify, and everywhere podcasts are found. And connect to ask your questions about the future by 